Well, welcome back to Lawrence's studio. Now, Lawrence, the, the Donald Duck picture that, that's on the screen right now is an absolutely great picture. <laughs> Can you tell us the background of how this started you on this journey? Well, you know, if you listen to my mother, I was a child prodigy. Um, I don't think that's borne out by this lovely drawing of Donald Duck, but uh, best I can recollect, it was probably done when I was in the second grade or so. And I had uh, an interest in art uh, all through my very young years. And uh, of course, my, my mother was very instrumental in uh, helping me pursue those kinds of things uh, rather than some kind of interest in sports, for instance. Um, so she was always on my side and encouraging me to do artistic things. And uh, so I was able to attend summer uh, workshops for young people to learn some basic things about art. And uh, then it just became uh, a part of my life. I understand when you were a little older in high school, you got to go to a, uh, a party uh, to a famous artist home with your parents and something transformational happened there. Yes, I uh, got to go to the home and studio of a, a well-known Tucson landscape painter by the name of Marco Murillo. And uh, while the party was going on, I was allowed to just wander about in his studio, which of course uh, in hindsight seemed like it was a gigantic place filled with all kinds of wonders. And I suspect that it was not actually gigantic, but in my eyes it was filled with all kinds of wonders. But the, the important thing that I learned that night was that for the first time I had become aware that it was possible for someone to make art for a living. And that was a, a, rele a, a revelation that I just had not anticipated, but stayed with me. The simple fact that I remember his name after all these years and remember that visit, I think is testament to that fact. I suspect that if a, a sophomore in high school today came to your studio, it may very well have the same impact on him that it had on you those uh, those years ago. So after that, he went to uh, Northern Arizona and uh, pursued an art degree there. Yes, I <clears throat> I had not planned to be an art major. I I thought I had always uh, always wanted to be a writer, but I discovered from talking to some. Uh, upperclassmen that if I was going to get a degree in English, I would have to take 18th century literature. So instead I went over to the art department and uh, discovered that I felt very at home there uh, and began to take classes and uh, discovered, sort of to my surprise, that I was had, I had been supremely well prepared for my college experience because of what I learned in high school right here in Tucson at Rincon High. I took art all four years and I was allowed to experiment with all kinds of media and with uh, all kinds of equipment working with various styles. I was taught the, the basics of design. I stretched my very own canvas and prepared it in the traditional manner using animal hide glue and gesso and ooh, lead paint, which you can't even <laughs> buy today. It sounded like you had some wonderfully educated and passionate art teachers uh, in high school. I did, and actually there was a pivotal moment I suspect it happened um, early on in my junior year. Uh, I was in a class that was being taught uh, by a woman whose name was uh, Louise Misto. And one day I was uh, 
not doing what I was supposed to be doing. I can't remember what the project was, but I had found a book that I pulled down in front of me and it was called Drawing in Pen and Ink by Henry C. Pitts. And my nose was in that book and suddenly I saw the shadow of Miss Misto move over me as she stood behind me peering over my shoulder and I thought, oh, I'm done for. But something amazing happened. She didn't say a word. The shadow just moved on by because she was such a good teacher that she recognized that something important was going on and what that important thing was, was learning. We'll get back to your involvement with the Tucson schools here in a moment. Um, but I want to go back to NAU for a second. As modernism techniques were the vogue back then, and certainly your, your landscapes today are represent, more representational, and I think you can even argue that your shamans are probably closer representational than they are to modernism. What did uh, all that modernism education at NAU, how did that influence you today? It allowed me to build on those basic principles of design that I learned and practiced in high school so that I, uh, I was able to really nail down uh, my abilities to compose images, to visually balance them. I understood uh, th the importance of sensitivity to line all those abstract concepts that must apply to all art, uh, but was close enough to the, the modernism that was being uh, touted at the time that it kept my professors happy, but taught me things that then uh, easily and almost immediately translated into the work I began to do after I graduated. That's a, it's so well said. It's great to be able to look at your, your paintings and, and see those aspects of modernism coming through after, after these years. The, um, you were talking about your, we'll say, breadth of artistic interest. Because I know that you work with the Tucson Ballet, uh, and there's, there's other artistic interests as, as well, in addition to the painting. Yes. and. My, uh, I, I did not have any opportunity to do any important collaborations until 2016 when I was invited by Ballet Tucson to cooperate with them uh, and collaborate on a new ballet that was uh, designed uh, around the uh, traditions of Dia de los Muertos. I had the fortune of working with Mary Beth Cabana who is the founding artistic director and the lead choreographer, Chaco Imada, and I worked with him for 11 months. I did over 300 digital renderings uh, that ended up being used as projections behind the dancers. They were used in promotional material. They were used in uh, uh, costuming and uh, all facets of the, of the dance. And I discovered that I was a much more capable artist than I had suspected. And this gave me an opportunity to really stretch my creative wings and find out those things about me. And it was, it was an experience that changed my life. And now anytime I have an opportunity to collaborate, I'm in there ready and willing to do it because I'm gonna learn something new. Thanks for bringing up the, the digital art because I understand that you're, uh, and this is something I'm sure lots mm -hmm. of the kids in school are very interested in. You probably spent a lot of time on, I guess your iPad or something similar, creating lots of digital artwork now. Yes, I started doing uh, digital work uh, back in the dark ages. Uh, it was uh, <clears throat> 1985 and uh, I started uh, doing illustrations for a, a book that I had written some time uh, prior. 
And uh, uh, this was back in the days when there was no such thing as anti-aliasing and my entire palette was limited to 256, 256 colors, uh, which sounds like a lot, but when you compare it to, to millions that you have access to today, it was nothing. Uh, so that was the beginning. And then over the years, I, a, as technology improved, uh, gave new capabilities, I continued to uh, design digitally, usually using simply uh, my Macintosh. And I, I was drawing with a mouse because that was the only thing that was available. Then uh, later on here, uh, I'd say in the past uh, decade or so, uh, now that iPads are available, I, all the work I did on the collaboration with Ballet Tucson uh, was done on an iPad Pro with an Apple Pencil. Uh, I found it to be a very responsive, forgiving tool that allowed me to experiment with things very rapidly, to make uh, massive changes almost instantly so that uh, I didn't have to spend so much time doing the mechanics that uh, a painter has to deal with when they're uh, dealing with canvases and easels and brushes and paint. It was all right there in front of me. And I have continued to do that kind of work. And in fact, not long ago, well, two years ago, started to work uh, in what's now called crypto art, which uh, is a way that has been developed by some people a lot smarter than I am to monetize uh, digital art. There was no way before to, to sell digital art, uh, but now there is because any piece I do can be associated with what's called a smart contract that follows that, uh, follows that uh, piece of art and establishes what they call provenance, which is the history of the work. Uh, who created it, who owned it, where was it. Uh, that's very important later on. Now that this technology exists, it is uh, pushing me to do more and more experimentation in digital art. Uh, and you know, one of the best things about working with digital art is when you finish the piece, you don't have to find a place to store it or hang it. <laughs> Well, I think we all would, would say that hopefully the, the, the painting world doesn't, doesn't lose your <laughs> talents, but it does sound like uh, some of your work that you've done with Tucson schools, that the digital art is, is a nice fit for them. Oh, it'd be great. You, you don't have to have the best, most recent, most powerful equipment. It is astonishing. If you, if you want to make art, you can manage to make it with more or less whatever you've got. In fact, I recently heard about a young lady in Venezuela who is very poor. She makes $3 a month working at a car wash. She is so poor that she has been living in the car wash for years. But she started using a little phone to do art and started it selling it on the crypto art markets and developed a following and reports are that now she is doing so well that she has purchased her own home. So you don't have to have the biggest iPad available. If you've got a phone, you can get a free app or two and make art whenever you want. So Lawrence, in these days with, with funding in schools, if you wanted to leave a message for both the FWA patrons and uh, the students in the schools, what, uh, what might you say to them? I would say that if it had not been for my ability to study art throughout my grade school, middle school, and high school years, I would not be an artist today. And we would all be so much poorer for that. Yeah, thank you. Well, thanks for sitting down with us tonight. Uh, it's just been fabulous. It's a, it's a great studio and it looks like maybe we'll get a, a quick tour of that as well. Thanks. Sure thing.